All this is Dr. Mubeen Sayyid from drbean.com. Welcome to one more show. So for, for the newcomers who might look at this discussion and say, why are you just continuing to talk with people? <laughs> Somebody, <laughs> some folks send me this message. This whole talk, this one is going to be talking with cool beans. So please don't wait for me to stop this and do something else. This is this chat. So today is the 100th. Overall, now we have discussed 500 COVID topics, 178 chit chats. Since we started numbering them, today is the 100th chit chat. So um, lots of chit chats. <laughs> There were an additional, I think, 30 or so morning chats for Europe as well. Thank you. Thank you so much for doing these chat chats. Congrats on 100. Thank you very much. Nick is here. Myocarditis incidence with this is about 142 per million. Seems higher than Pfizer. No? Yes, that is correct. And so Luffy is here. He agrees violently. <laughs> Let me see if I can I can hold him. Luffy. He is totally upset. Ouch. He wants to go out. <laughs> OK, so that was Luffy, made a dramatic entry and ran away. Wow. Luffy, so he's standing at the door, he wants to go out. Wow. So Nick, yes, you're correct. This, uh, at least if we extrapolate this number, then it is a higher number. The interesting thing for me was their explanation of it. If you look at it, they said, If you see here, they said myocarditis was reported in a vaccine recipient. An independent safety monitoring committee considered the event most likely to be viral myocarditis. So um, immune mediated condition find that means immune system attack the heart. And it was viral myocarditis, meaning nothing to do with the vaccine. It was some other virus that had infected the person. Now, we saw similar uh, messages from the other vaccines as well to say, hey, not related to the vaccine, something else. So I think there would be some more uh, data that we should keep an eye on. So. Doug says was placebo saline or something else. So let's see in their math. I was actually trying to find that as well. Let's see their method. So method was So they have the protocol at the end. Let me just open up the protocol. Hmm. So I cannot open the PDF. There is some issue. So uh, Doug, I'll have to look into that protocol to see exactly what did they use for the um, placebo. <laughs> After having three or four failed attempts, they want my feedback. It would not be that great. Um, OK, so let's continue our discussion. I did see that about the sale and vaccination. Horrible. Um, Gazer Gazer says, seems vaccines are causing eye vision problems. Is this well known or hushed up? So one of the patients that has been a post vaccine long hauler or vaccine injured. She has a problem with the vision. And what she says is 
she says i cannot focus on the computer screen or, or mobile screen or when i go out i cannot focus very well uh, for example if she's out for groceries she says she cannot read the tags or focus on them she had a lot more issues these have been resolved by using the long haul protocol but this i visual disturb disturbance with vision is still persistent and we are still trying to figure out how to help that so uh, gazer i don't think it's a hushed problem but i think it is not very well um, recognized lee lai says have you seen anything yet about epivax covid vaccine no not yet Colin says, I posted the test lorry episode on two different platforms, tried to comment on it and was denied that, but the video must have got banned. So we have now, we have it on BitChute. Hopefully it will be there and it will be safe there. I have downloaded it as well. So if needed to, I'll upload it again. I tried with the, there was another uh, one, Odessi. I tried with Odessi, but Odessi will not let me up create a channel or upload anything because it said i need to buy some credits and when i try to buy them it would say united states country is not supported yet so i just put it on bit shoot tina harvey says um question could the moderna vaccine cause glucose levels stay elevated in a pre-diabetic so any inflammatory condition can cause temporary diabetes and that should go away but moderna directly causing diabetes will not be possible nora says upload on rumble they leave it alone okay so i'll upload on R i think somebody already put it on rumble <laughs> i was sent a link to say your video on rumble so maybe it's already there so Jill Doni says, could the eye problem be due to inflammation of optic nerve possible or the processing centers? So we do not know exactly what is going on. Energy 84 says, oh, I didn't know that about Odessi. Yeah, so if I very quickly show you that. So this is what I was doing this morning. So if I go to Odessi. I have my account now and so if I go to my account and I say create a channel it says create a channel when I say create a channel it says either buy swap credits or earn rewards so if I go to buy swap credits and I say you United States it says um, only some countries are eligible at this time we are working to make this available so go back this country isn't supported yet. So I can't do it. So that's what happened with Odessi. So Genesis Lights. So once again, 100th. So we have been together. <laughs> we have been together uh, since April of last year. So April to April and then May, June, July. So one year and a quarter. We've done a lot of talking. <laughs> so Genesis Light says, how does the Novavax spike protein architecture in terms of binding capability differ from the other vaccines? How does this offer more advantages than others or none? So assumption i'm assuming that their spike protein is locked as well the only advantage i see is that these spike proteins are aggregated together in a bigger particle that means they cannot run away like individual spike proteins but eventually if somebody is is concerned about spike proteins then these are spike proteins so the um, hopefully they cannot bind because they're locked but they are spike proteins. 
meme plexes will natural immunity be enough to fight off these variants if the vaccines aren't efficient enough to fight it off so the i think the answer is it's going to be similar on both ends if the variant has become so different that it can escape a vaccines generated antibodies then it might escape our immune system as natural infection generated antibodies too although i feel that in the case of natural infection, our body will create more types of antibodies than just for the, um, what is that, just for the spike protein. So natural infection will cause us to look at much more proteins, M protein, N protein, and spike proteins, and so on. So ideally, our immune system should be better trained, however, let me give you a counterpoint to my point, and that is the vaccine that was used in Peru is the CoronaVac, right? So that is an inactivated virus. So inactivated virus should have all proteins, M protein and N protein and the spike protein, and the efficacy was lower. So now is that because their adjuvant was weak or is that because the body did not respond well? Having said that, now I'm going to counter my own this point as well. There are multiple studies that I discussed which show that the immunity generated after a natural infection is as robust as immunity generated by the vaccines. So Courtney Power says, can we test for natural infection so yes, you can test for antibodies, but we know that antibodies will ramp down after some time. And so even if you had the natural infection, let me just have a new, sometimes my computer just become a little finicky. So let's say the, the antibodies, they ramp up and then they ramp down while the memory cells are still present. So if you test someone here for the antibodies, you might come back and say, no, they do not have the infection. On the other hand, at this time when the antibodies are low or almost absent, the cell memory cells, if you measure them, they may be present. So that means T-detect-like tests would help. Doug says, uh, inactivation can change some proteins in a virus. Yes, so the in inactivation phenomena itself could deshape the virus. You are correct. Generally, the idea of inactivation is to pick up the RNA part and just bind to that and destroy or, or lock it. But you're correct, it is an inactivation process and it can denature other proteins too. Max Hedrum says, two questions about ivermectin. Is it toxic if taken over a long time? Could ivermectin, if taken wi widely, enable an increase in number of variants? Thanks. So number one, could this be toxic? So far, I have said it many times, ivermectin has never been tried, for example, as a prophylactic on a weekly basis for a long period of time. Having said that, there are many people now who have been taking it for a year or more, and they are fine. So do we have data? We don't have data for that. Uh, now, the second part, if taken widely, enable increased number of variants? No, neither ivermectin nor vaccines. The variants are created because virus is infecting someone and replicating there. It's not about ivermectin or not. Now, having said that, if ivermectin is present in somebody and they have the viral infection that occurs too, in theory, the viral load is less. That means the replication is less. Still, can that replication enable a new virus that is different, more powerful, or mutated to escape an immune system? Maybe. Because this uh, mutation in the virus occurs in everyone when they are infected. James Newen says, what are your thoughts on COVID recovered needing the, the shot? And I have done this discussion for about a year. And I, the more I see vaccine-related issues, the more I become confirmed on my message. And that is, let's say this person here at point A got the infection. They do not need 
the vaccine. This this uh, little child, 25 years old, she got the long haul after the vaccine. September of last year had the infection. She was fine, asymptomatic. Got detected because they did some test and they found out that her swab was positive. I do not know why did they do it, but she she found out she was positive in September. Somebody told her to go take a vaccine and she took the vaccine in this May. And then in June, she has become long hauler. So if somebody has been infected, they have taken care of the virus. So there is no need for the vaccine unless, number one, the virus itself has become very different. So virus has, let's say, the variant, let's say natural variant here, Wuhan version. And here we have some delta multiplied with 20,000 changes in it. And so this virus is so different that the antibodies generated here cannot act on this. In that case, it's a new virus. And now the person will have to develop new immunity. This will be SARS-CoV-3, SARS-CoV-3. That is one possibility or one reason to say we would need a, for example, vaccine. However, please note now that a vaccine that is created today with natural virus in mind and their messenger RNA structures, then that vaccine generated antibodies will also not be very useful to attack this new virus. Unless they come back here and say, we, we studied the new virus. We understand the messenger RNA. We changed our vaccines messenger RNA. Now we are going to give you a booster against this version. The other possibility is that between point A to point B, so let's say somebody got infected in September, and now we are here in May or June. I'm using that person's um, example. If between these two points, their own immune system or their own body's state changed, for example, cancer uh, occurred or leukemias occurred or diabetes uncontrolled happened or they were given an organ donation and the immune suppression is occurring or chemotherapy happened or some other such cases where there is um, there is immune systems behavior is gone or better behavior is gone or reduced, then they may need a vaccine. Otherwise, a vaccine after the natural infection does not make sense. The person has taken care of the natural infection with their body in a healthy, happy way. What do they care for the vaccine? LB says, how can the virus mutate so quickly? LB, actually, this virus is mutating slowly. The coronaviruses have proof readers in them that kind of suppress their too much of a mutation. Uh, because if you look at the flu viruses and other, they mutate a lot. So this is actually a slow mutation. If it was fa fast, we'll be in trouble. Kimberly, Kimberly Sutton says, Dr. Bean, question, how do immunoglobulin deficiencies come into play with all these vaccines? Are they being looked at in regards to the spike protein had COVID three times found out was hypogamma globulinemia? Yeah, so I don't think they're looking at that. They do say that we offer vaccine to immunocompromised, but they do not actually look at it specifically. So Zion Solo says, are those who recovered naturally also immune to new variants? So, so far, if a vaccine company says that our vaccines are still applicable effectively to all the new variants, then a person who got infected and has recovered can claim the same thing as well because the virus original was the same thing. So until some vaccine fails, 
that is when we can look at original infection as well and say maybe that failed too. Now the question only is, vaccine is only looking at a spike protein while the natural infection is looking at more than the spike protein. So natural infection is looking at M protein, N protein or nuclear nu nucleocapsid protein, which is around the RNA, and then other proteins and then spike protein. So it is possible that the natural infection generated antibodies, even if there is a change in the spike protein, they, there may still be antibodies against other parts and that would still cause better uh, control. EJM says, should prior myocarditis with Lyme disease years ago suggest not to get the vaccine? No, so the issue with the vaccine and it is unfortunate that some of the folks picked up the spike protein in the blood and muddied up the basic mechanism to say it is a spike protein that is cross-reacting with the cardiac tissue. In that process, the, the actual possible mechanism of antibodies cross-reacting with the heart, cardiac tissue, or cytokines causing inflammatory system to ramp up and then cardiac damage occurring, that more plausible mechanisms got blurred out they got suppressed or masked in this spike protein issue noise. The result was we cannot go back to the vaccine companies to say, change your RNA structure so that this mimicry may not happen. Still, mimicry can happen because of the person's own immune system's behavior, but we lost this capacity to go back to the vaccine companies and say, behave because now we have a counter issue to say, well, it's not just the antibodies, it is the spike itself going to the heart. So with this, the Lyme disease related myocarditis, again, depends what was that. But here it is mimicry, who will get the mimicry, whose antibodies will cross react with heart as well. A previous myocarditis is not an indicator of that. So Colin Hamill says, would there still not be enough similarities for the immune system to recognize it anyways? Yes. But uh, Colin, think about it. I'm talking about huge change, SARS-CoV-3. Otherwise, there is 86% similarity between human coronaviruses and SARS-CoV-2. Still, our human coronavirus antibodies are not able to handle the SARS-CoV-2. They just let it go on. Maybe the symptoms are less. They, maybe they try to control it. So the question is, how much is the change? If the changes are these tiny, so far the changes are fractions. These fractional changes are not very concerning. I saw a super chat by, doc, by Dr. Z. Thank you very much. Um, Sky Frog. says, did the Novavax report efficacy with type 2 diabetes? So I think that they said we have comorbidities. The piece that I missed was, and let's see if I can actually open up these appendices. If I go to supplementary appendix. So somehow these PDFs are not opening, but I'm sure they have the data in there. So Skyfrog, I'm, I'll, maybe it is my network. It doesn't seem like it. We are doing everything else over here. I'm going to try again later to see if I can look into that data in their tables. Inner G84 says, are there still challenges with logistics of transporting the vaccine due to temperature issues in the supply delivery chain? Yes, but not for these. We still have, I believe, uh, for Pfizer or Oxford, Oxford vaccine, BioNTech, sorry, not Oxford, BioNTech vaccine, 
that still needs a deeper, cooler temperature or cold chain. Moderna needs lesser of that. But apparently, we have taken care of it. The only problem is that if a vaccine is sitting somewhere for a longer period of time, it is becoming useless. CJ says, if myocarditis is autoimmune response, what stops the immune system from continuing to attack a heart tissue? So in the beginning, when you give the vaccine, and let me back up, there are some times when the viral myocarditis occurs and mimicry occurs, and then that continues for a very long time till the heart actually fails. So in this case, I think this is my conjecture because the basic mechanism is still not known. So talking about the second layer of the mechanism, when the basic mechanism is not known is kind of further hypothesis. But in, I think what happens is that antibodies are generated for a shorter period of time. So during that period, there is enough quantity of antibodies to go and attack. And after that, the cells ramp down because they do not see the antigen present everywhere. And that is how it calms down. Yes, yeah, so James Nguyen says, do you know what we should do if we have myocarditis? So most of the, again, I am not an emergency um, room physician or ICU room physician. So because of that, I do not know exact protocols. But most of the time for myocarditis, protocol is rest and then steroids, anti-inflammatories, suppressing the immune system with steroids, and then any other symptomatic help. For example, if the heart is not able to support and there's edema that is occurring, they would give uh, some diuretics and so on. They would, when they'll give diuretics and they'll have to figure out the, the electrolyte balances. So there would be a complete uh, management of, which will say supportive management for the patient till these antibodies go away. Augie says that my myocarditis resolves by itself. Yes, so we have to provide supportive uh, therapy in the meantime. Jessica says, is it possible for the vaccine to cause someone to break out in leg ulcers two weeks after having it, despite being an clexan and have, could you treat it? To me, it seems like clotting in the veins of the leg, but I do not know exactly what caused it. Knowing what caused it would then Cause. If it is clotting, that could be possible. So Arun has a good question. Why only the cardiac cells are affected and not other organs? It is possible that other organs have this mimicry happening as well. <clears throat> but generally, let's say the other parts of the body are not... We get, for example, muscle aches or joint aches. That is because of the mimicry as well. The joint ache is actually because the antibodies are attacking the joint tissue or muscle aches are partly that as well. So there are inflammations as well. So heart is just one such other tissue too. The problem with the heart is heart cannot take rest. We can't tell our heart to say, you know what, go for one hour, don't do anything and heal and then come back. Because heart has to continue to work, any inflammation becomes pronounced and we know the chest pain occurs and the issue occurs. So this mimicry would be happening for other tissues as well. Nick, this is a good question. With Lyme in 50 million people in US and potential of vaccine to reactivate occult infections, do you have any thoughts, concerns, advice? So See, so actual infection and vaccine, both are, it seems like reactivating some of the viruses. So for example, today I went for my son's second dose and I have put him on anti-inflammatory, anti-allergies, um, and I'm gonna continue, and ivermectin. And I'm going to continue that way with him for a few days now. So I think this is important that immune system stays balanced. So Nick, as you would suggest, 
uh, healthy diet, plant-based diet, um, vitamin Cs, vitamin Ds, as many reactive oxygen species killers or antioxidants as possible. Better vitamin D levels so that the immune system can respond correctly. These are very important. So Genesis says, would the manufacturing process of the Novavax become much more critical to ensure the spike protein's quality? If you have manufactured manufacturing defect, you ruin the quality of the spike very easily. It is possible, yes. Generally, they give messenger RNA piece to the DNA of the bacteria or the plasmid. And so that messenger RNA is very thoroughly tested and the result of that is seen and then given to the plasmid, then plasmids results are seen as well. So and generally that RNA would stay RNA. It would not, it would not change. But yes, you're correct. If there is a reason for manufacturing fault, then we'll have faulty spike proteins, which is similar, for example, in case of Moderna uh, or messenger RNA, not Moderna. Remember that study where they said that the anchor with the spike protein is not correctly produced because of the um, splicing. And they said more possible with Pfizer than Moderna. They were talking about fault, faulty manufacturing, but instead of in the cells outside of the body, in the cells in the body. So Augie says, are persistent swollen lymph nodes common in long haulers? So as long as inflammation is going on, there could be swollen lymph nodes, yes. So I haven't seen that to be too common, but lymph node swelling is an indication that the B cells and T cells are proliferating and there is a fight going on and the inflammation is happening. And so that increased number of cells causes the lymph node to swell up. This should give the doctor an idea that inflammation is continuing and they should try to control the inflammation. Zan Solo says, my personal opinion is if the whole world used ivermectin with COVID, menace would be you solved quickly. That is correct. So Colin and I responded to this one. Yes, you're correct. There could be enough similarities, yes. James says, what is the worst long haul symptom you've seen? Worst one are the neurological symptoms, tinnitus, visual disturbance, inability to focus and work. Most of the time I'm seeing people are okay with tachycardia, for example, or, or tiredness. But as soon as it comes to the inability to focus and concentrate and articulate and recall and talk, they feel something really bad has happened. And think about it if to us right now, all of a sudden, I cannot speak with you or I cannot recall correctly or I cannot do these lectures because my brain is just not keeping up. What would happen? I'll feel I'm disabled. So this is what happens to many who then feel we cannot work. And if we cannot work, we cannot earn. If we cannot earn, we are essentially disabled. That is a horrible feeling. It is quite a an insert when people say that, hey, people are making up this thing so that they can get disability. Youngsters who have their careers, their lives, their dreams in front of them, they would not be looking up to say, you know what, I just would be happy with this few hundred dollars every month and that's my life. So neurological symptoms are more bothersome than others. <clears throat> Bree says, it seems my stomach is sensitive to ivermectin, 22 milligram dosage. I have IBS I had with food and water. Pain started that night. Hours later, I eat plant-based. Is this normal? Can I lower or split the dose? Yes. So please lower the dose, split the dose as well. Ivermectin does cause GIT issues, so the dose should be lowered. Eat it with food as well. That would help too. Casey, thank you very much for the super chat. Try to ask last night, since it is being advised to not vaccinate children, would you suggest a prophylaxis dose of ivermectin with the emerging more contagious variants? 
so um number one vaccinating children is family's decision um for example for my son we spoke and i put in front of him i said look here are the possibilities i gave him the example of some of the family members who became long haulers after the vaccine um i and then i discussed that here are the goods and bads of this uh, he wanted to have the second dose and um so we we did go and get the second dose for him and i've been asking him since then i've been putting him on um I put him on some things that I feel are necessary to keep him safe during this time. So, number one, the the decision is in your hand or your family's hands. Uh, with that, ivermectin for children, any child who is more than two years of age or greater than fifteen kilogram of body weight can use ivermectin. The only thing I'll repeat it. Ivermectin has been given to children, especially spe for antiparasitic behavior, but that is Ivermectin given once a month or three months or six months or once a year. Here we're talking about Ivermectin every week. That has not been tested. Still, there has been no issues seen so far. <laughs> Kevin says, Luffy, where are you? So Luffy was here. I am still kind of massaging my arm. I tried to bring him here, and he um, he scratched my arm when he was trying to run away. So Kimberly Sutton says, is it possible people have undiagnosed immunodeficiencies causing a lot of the long hauler problems? Possible, just like hypogamma globulinemia, would love to get deeper into understanding the roles. Info has been limited. That is correct. So one possibility is the spike protein pieces sitting in the messenger in the uh, monocyte. So that is one that we know from Dr. Bruce Patterson's work. In addition to that, so this is one that hey, monocytes are sitting here with pieces of S1 protein sticking in them. And they then continue to release cytokines, which cause uh, inflammation at the blood vessel wall boundaries, which then cause local congestion in that area because the, the capillaries kind of, I'm um, using this term loosely, they spill or leak, and that causes congestion, which causes pressure and the cytokines and the debris and the, the um, cytokine material irritates the cell and then the symptoms. Another study, which I studied recently, they said that they found that the blood cell, and I was intending to do that, and I missed it because of these topics. They saw that the blood cells get a damage to their cytoskeleton. So what happens is our cells inside of them have a cytoskeleton. They have microtubular structures that give them shape. Just like when we make a building, we make a structure before and then we fill in. But there is a structure for the building. It looks like a window. <laughs> this was supposed to be a building. So now it is a building. <laughs> so, so we have this, this skeleton or the structure made, and then we fill in the rest. Same is the case for these cells as well, that they have a cytoskeleton in them, which are tubular structures that give them shape and the cells can then break down the skeleton from one place and move it to another place and they can change their shape with that. They, uh, the study found that the cytoskeleton of the cells, for example, RBCs, for example, uh, blood, white blood cells and other cells, their cytoskeleton becomes rigid and it is stiff. That means they cannot change their shape. And the problem is that when a cell has to pass through the capillaries, it has to change its shape to kind of pass through from the narrow capillary. This is usually called, this is called thimbing. So when the cells are rigid, they cannot thimb correctly. They cannot flex correctly to pass through the blood vessels, so narrow blood vessels. And the result is that now there will be congestion and that would also cause leaking of the material. And that would also cause the pressure effects. 
So this is another possibility. A third possibility is that the immune system is just dysregulated. What does that mean? There is no S1. There is nothing cytoskeletal issues. It says that the, the let's say, mast cells or the macrophages, they, they have just stopped being calm. And they're just continuously, they're stuck in M1 state, we call them. That is the inflammatory state. They're stuck in there, and they just continue to make cytokines. And then they are amplified by the remaining adaptive arm, and this whole cycle just continues. So regulatory immune system is imbalanced. So if this is the case, then we can solve it in a different way. So now going back to Kimberly, your point here, is it possible to have immunodeficiencies as well? Yes, that can also be the reason, meaning there are multiple possibilities. Justin, thank you very much. Genesis Light, thank you very much. Gen in general, we when we talk about vaccine efficacy, does the viral load makes any difference on that side? So yes. So if you think about it, whenever um, we talk about nowadays, so some of the doctors or some of the experts have caused so much of the confusion in terms of mechanisms that the original mechanism get buried and people connect the dots in the wrong discussions. So for example, when we talk about vaccines nowadays and we say, here is a variant, let's say Delta or let's say um, Lambda, Delta, they are more efficient in binding, correct? So because they're more efficient in binding, Ideally, what we should think about is that if they're more efficient, then the immune system cell, so let's say here is an immune system cell. Uh, this is a B cell, and that B cell is sleeping here. So this is a sleeping B cell. How do I make a sleeping B cell? So this is a sleeping B cell. He's just sleeping on his bed, and he's waiting for his function to do. While it is sleeping, the virus comes in and attaches to the cell and then within 24 hours, very quickly goes into one cell, comes out, goes to the next cell, comes out and keeps causing destruction. Now, by the time this cell, the immune system cell wakes up, let's say in 24 or 48 hours, virus has gotten so much destruction done already that we have symptoms and we have problems. Now, if I look at your question, does viral load matter? Yes. So here, because the viral load increased before the immune system woke up and controlled it, we would get symptoms. That is a reduction in efficacy. But really not reduction in efficacy. It is because the virus has become faster. So eventually, yes, reduction, but in a different way. So why I said that these things have become muddied up, if you ask general population, many people would simply say, see, this is what some doctors were talking about, that vaccines would cause a reduction in efficacy because there is immune escape. This is, you, you could call this an immune escape by saying that the virus did a lot of damage before the immune system woke up. So that is another way of escaping. And if that is the case, then yeah, sure, immune escape. But that would have happened either way. We should look at the basic mechanisms as well to understand what's going on. So for almost all standard mechanisms, there is someone who has added a layer of uh, confusion or scare on top of that mechanism. And then we start thinking in those terms. Justin Sifeli says, you spoke about cells that get released when you work out that could cause long haul to relapse and CCR5 blocker can help. Any indication how long those cells stay affected with COVID, will someone ever be able to work out again? Yes. So there are one, it takes weeks and months. For example, I'll give you one of the patient. So she was not even able to, so she loved exercising, all youngsters do. I think people like me do as well. So, but she was not able to even go out for groceries or other, just that, that much of physical stress would cause her to relapse. After the medicines, 
now she goes out she does groceries um she can move from one place to another place she can she's fine except that she still says my visual pro vision problems are persisting and this happened within two weeks not two weeks actually three weeks then there are cases where the um, with the management or the treatment was not available because they were in countries where these medicines were not available readily they continued on with this issue for longer period of time for months and slowly and gradually are coming out and they resuming their exercises so short answer is yes this will happen the thing is this don't test yourself while the cells are clearing out and the mechanism is getting back to reset any small exercise flares it up and we get stuck again so just let it go maybe two three weeks one or two months and then you start building up your um, your routines again. So Nihu says, Hayu says, Nihu says, is there any idea what causes con causes or contributes to sluggish immune response? Yes. So for example, a cell. Are you talking about this sluggish immune response? If this is the case, if you're asking about this, that why does it wake up in 24 to 48 hours? If this is the case, the question you're asking, then what happens is they actually wake up right away. It's kind of a way for me to say it. They, these immune cells, for example, let's say bone marrow plasma blasts, bone marrow plasma blasts, or plasma cells. They are sitting in the bone marrow and they become aware of the antigen as soon as antigen can reach them but they would still now need activation and they would need proliferation differentiation and starting to to work so starting to make messenger rna messenger rna would come out and go to ribosome ribosome will make antibodies antibodies will then be released that whole process can take a day or more for them to make more cells then for cells to make messenger RNAs, messenger RNAs to make um, antibodies, antibodies to be released. So that is what it is. So it's not really that they were actually just sleeping and not doing anything and woke up 24 hours later and said, now I'll work. They were preparing to work, but that preparation takes time. They have to make new babies, <laughs> new cells, and then those babies need to learn how to make these antibodies and then they become functional. Good question. Nick says the gut brain axis may require a refocus on the gut with ivermectin and pre and probiotics, says as, say as an additional vehicle to address some neurological issues such as brain fog. You are very correct. And I think this is a very important area, the, the um, gut microbiome. So Michelle says, when I tested positive in May, nobody from health department told me which variant I had. So how will I know? Not unless you, unless you ask them or unless they're willing to tell. I think there is no process to say, we'll tell everybody what they're, they know it for their research works, but usually they don't sequence everybody in that way. So Jessica says, can AZ vaccine cause leg ulcers when there is no deep vein thrombosis? Can ivermectin help? Ivermectin can definitely help, but we should still know what is causing the ulcers. <laughs> Boka Siege says, are there any doctors on here or is this, there are doctors here as well? Denise says, my doctor is checking me if I even have CCR5 receptors before taking Baragra. Why? I'm sure that you have those receptors. And nurses. So I actually, nowadays, at least in the US, nurse practitioners, physician assistants, so I call them all together, healthcare workers. So yes. Doctors are here, nurses are here, and PS are here, PAs are here, other healthcare, pharmaceutical, and other uh, specialties and areas are here as well. So
So Jamili Zal says, hi, Dr. Bean, should we take ivermectin even when fully vaccinated and from what age? Can we give ivermectin to teens when school vacations are over? Greetings from the Netherlands. So greetings back to you. Ivermectin can be taken by every age. I take it even after my vaccination. A few days ago, three, four days ago, I woke up and I had congestion and I was, I had low grade fever and I felt concerned that I may have something going on, possibly COVID. So I took ivermectin right away and I was fine the next day. I'm sure it was not COVID, but whatever it was, at least I had ivermectin, I used it. Similarly, when my son is here today, I'm going to continue him on ivermectin as well. So at least within my family, we use ivermectin that way. <laughs> so Michelle, Michelle Anthony, do you recommend COVID recovered continue wearing masks? So why I'm laughing about this question is, that these questions seem like setups to get Dr. Bean yelled at. Uh, what happens is I provide my response and then the folks who do not like masks, then they, so last time, just I, I mentioned that somebody sent me death threats. And so some cool beans in Discord said that, hey, they, they were sorry to hear this. And I get these many times, it's not a new thing, but this person who was anti-masker, had such a graphic way of uh, the method to kill me was so graphic that he shared with me that I will do this. That I was surprised on one end to think that somebody can think that way. And on the other end, to think that this person just is not happy that I said I'll wear a mask. So because of that, I kind of laugh about these kind of questions that they seem like a setup for <laughs> for me to say something and then some people getting mad. Uh, so the idea of a mask, for example, let's say Delta variant, and we want to make sure that Delta variant does not attack us, then sure, have a mask, why not? I wear a mask even now. I am vaccinated. I'm beyond the protection time as well. I wear a mask because... And this is what made people really upset last time. Because I used the word, I said, it's a social norm. And they said, now it has become a social norm for you. And you are such a sheep. <laughs> so then that caused a person to be wound up enough to say, OK, I'm going to kill you. The, the point of social norm is this. If I go out and there are people who are wearing masks, instead of standing in there without a mask, and then they're feeling uncomfortable, and then this asking me or thinking in their heart, and then I'm having to explain that, hey, I am vaccinated, no worries. It may be a good icebreaker, but at the same time, it is a respect for someone to say, you know what, in a huddle, there is mask if required, then I'll wear a mask as well instead of trying to pick a fight there. Having said that, nowadays, many of the businesses are actually saying, don't wear a mask, uh, you're fine. For example, Starbucks. So most of the time now, uh, I still wear a mask, but sometimes I remember that, okay, I should not, and sometimes I don't wear a mask. So short answer is that it depends where that society is. Are uh, they looking to continue with the mask or not? What is their own state? But I wear it just for to respect others and to maybe also protect myself from deltas. In some cases, I don't. <laughs> Colin Hamill says, is the biggest problem profiteering? <laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> I found out that humans are secondary to money. <laughs> P. Lee J. says, is there a qualitative difference between spikes produced by messenger RNA in the body and moth spikes? No, it is really any locking mechanism that may be different. Interestingly, these locking mechanisms were actually not invented now. These were invented in 2006 for the original SARS-CoV uh, 
uh, vaccines. Those mechanisms are used nowadays by other vaccine manufacturers as well. Because of that, the changes, the proline change, the mutation is common in many of the vaccines. I remember uh, Doug had, Doug, was it you? Am I incorrectly saying it? Doug had mentioned that Pfizer probably did not have that locking mechanism. <laughs> Kevin says, Dr. Bean, do you think that medical community will cave and start prescribing ivermectin as standard of care? No, I think this, uh, this division of some doing it and some not doing it will stay. I think majority will not do it. Minority will do this. Within the minority, there are going to be two kinds of people. One who are just curious to say, well, I'm going to check if this really works. And the others who are actually believers that this works. Fruendesis says, and welcome back from Madagascar. Congrats for 100. Thank you. Is it possible to have long haul with very mild COVID? A friend never had specific symptoms, but her health just never went back to normal. Yes, it is actually possible to have long haul even after asymptomatic situation. Doug, so AstraZeneca is not perfusion stabilized. Yes, I remember you had said it last time as well. So AstraZeneca, AstraZeneca is Oxford. That is not perfusion stabilized. Thank you, Doug. So Lick says, what vaccine did you get? I got Moderna. I love Novavax, although I, say, I feel that for Novavax, because it is spikes, it's a cluster of spikes that has created a taboo for it. So it has an uphill battle to convince people that it would be useful vaccine. Uh, I love Novavax. Uh, however, when I went for vaccination, they were giving out Moderna at that time. I love Moderna too. So Stratilize says, if your strategy is to depend on ivermectin until Novavax, would you go ahead with messenger RNA because of Delta mutation? Delta mutation has not shown more lethality. It has shown more infectiousness that it can infect more people, but it is not showing to be more lethal. Now, is it not more lethal because people are vaccinated and protected, or because it is become less lethal, that is why it is spreading more. So I have maintained this for about a year now, that a virus that spreads faster and more has to be less lethal or virulent, so that to allow people to stay upright and walk around and give it to others. So having said that, the decision is really yours. Um, my, I always give my example not to tell people um, that hey, I did this, but to that is my way of saying that this is how I my decision will be. I took it as soon as I could get the vaccine, and it has given me a lot of uh, peace of mind. <laughs> so, so here are the folks, those who provide respect by saying, we will kill you. So Gio Naida says, yeah, well, respect goes both ways. Those who wear a facial diaper should not be so blind as to acknowledge the right of those who choose not to wear one. So now if you think about it, this person is adding a comment here, asking for respect while in their own message they are disrespecting. So the uh, I sometimes think and uh, enjoy these kind of comments to think about it that how much of a, mental ability is needed to provide an example to do something correctly. 
the best way to do something correctly is to give an example. So when you start with your own message as a facial diaper, you have already offended everyone who you want to engage to say, respect us. So you have done two things that are interesting. One is you created two groups, vex, uh, mask or no mask. And secondly, you created an offense towards one of the group. And now you started that uh, issue. At least here in these discussions, I have never tried to disrespect. I used to call, for example, folks who do not want vaccine. I used to call them my friends who do not want vaccine or anti-vaxxer friends. However, since I've seen this kind of a messages, I have become a little less friendly back to them as well, because it is difficult to say that, hey, I'm going to kill you, somebody telling me, and then you say, well, fine. So uh, please ask for, number one, you should not need to ask people for respect. When you provide respect, you get respect and love. Going out and saying, respect me or respect us, actually means there is something incorrectly being done and now there is a need to ask for respect. And then when asking for respect, at least do not then add statements that would not get you respect. Okay, so Jamie says, Last one, is ivermectin the same as stromectal? I believe so, yes. Kimberly Sutton says, will vaccine increase antibodies? If someone is already deficient in creating antibodies, how would the vaccine work? If the body doesn't work, is it confusing? It is. So, so let's say we are here. And let's say somebody has a problem with creating immunoglobulins or correct amounts of immunoglobulins. So there are two ways. There is an absolute A gamma globulinemia. That means we cannot produce IgG at all. So in that case, what is happening is that the B cells cannot switch to IgG forming DNA pieces or genes. So in such folks, when the vaccine is given, they will make IgM, which is a temporary thing. They will make IgA which is a more permanent thing. They would make IgE, which may not be the best thing to do, but that happens in everyone. And they would continue to make IgD, which is useful as a receptor. So the most important aminoglobulin, IgG, is missing. For example, if this person is a mother, she will not be able to provide that protection to her child. Or she will not have the IgG produced for a longer period of time. IgGs are usually produced for longer. But in the short run, they will be um, IgM produced. Now, when this person gets exposed again after the vaccine, for example, and the virus comes in, they will produce possibly more IgMs because they didn't class switch to IgG or they could not successfully make IgGs. They might still make IgM, which would provide some protection, but not a lot. And they would make IgG, IgA and IgE and IgD, which will provide some protection as well, especially IgA. So there will be some protection, but not a lot. So if that is the case, they might need IVIGs to be given. But that means they should still take vaccine if they are convinced for vaccine. They should still take vaccine so they can have IgA and IgE and IgD and IgM, even if they cannot have IgG or they have less IgG. Uh, I'm just looking at the comments. <laughs> um, Sherilyn says, a young girl has been in hospital for two months on oxygen. Can ivermectin help? So ivermectin helps in this state as well, in this condition as well, although 
I have seen less efficacy of ivermectin compared to acute or uh, earlier part of the disease. But still, it is a, an important part to prevent long haul outcomes. <laughs> Doug says, South Park called them tin diapers. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Correct. Cab says, why should anyone care if you wear a mask or if you don't mind your own business? And, and really, at least society has reached that point that we have enough vaccines and enough uh, immunity developed that if somebody does not want to wear a mask, they can, or somebody does not want to get a vaccine, fine. But I don't understand these fights. The fight should be at a le level where there is a benefit of that. So, for example, when somebody fights with me over here, even that day, that person who was trying to say will kill you. So I hope that this geo person was not trying to justify that person by creating this message. But when somebody says to me, well, it's my body, my cells. I never asked you that it is not your body and not your cells. Do what you like. You don't have to declare it to me. I am sitting here on an internet based system. I have no control over you and your decisions. I can only share information. And even you don't like that, you can just turn it off. Kimberly Sutton says, thank you, Dr. Mean. Thank you very much. Um, I saw a another here, another. Um, so Mean says, I have Hashimoto's and high antibodies. OK, here in New Zealand, only Pfizer offered. Pfizer BioNTech, correct? Correct. Pfizer BioNTech, yes. Novavax potentially start of next year. Thoughts would love ivermectin on standby, but no doctors listed as yet on FLCC. So, <clears throat> as long as you're taking medication, again, not an, an advice. I will. I say this for all autoimmune disease patients. As long as they're taking medication to keep their autoimmune system in check to the normal levels, then their body can be expected to behave normally. So that is how you should look at your body. If body is not behaving normally, then of course, uh, a vaccine can come and trigger up the inflammatory system and cause some more symptoms or more intensive symptoms. Although I have not seen that with the autoimmune patients. Yes, sure about ivermectin. That is a problem for so many. <laughs> so uh, I, so in honor of Doug, I usually just stop sharing and then I forget to share again. So this was the question that was asked, and I was answering this question by making the cell to say, here we have a cell B cell. That B cell, when it is exposed to infection or vaccine, it makes IgM first, then it makes IgG, then it makes Ig. So MDG, so M, then D, then G, then E, and then A. That is the class switching. So if, let's say, the IgG is not occurring, there are others that are being formed, and they are important. They would provide help. I'm going to leave it on this time. Otherwise, I keep forgetting to uh, put it on or off. So Gio says, I appreciate you responding to my comments in a mature fashion. I should refrain from making those comments. You're right. There is too much division already that I do not need to add more to the fire. Thank you very much. That actually your response is much more mature than what I have seen when somebody starts a um, commentary with, with some uh, harsh words in it. So you are braver than I am. I just had to control myself you had to actually uh, retract. So thank you very much. You, your 
uh, your bravery is more. So Coolbean says, what is the efficacy of Kalwanji seeds in COVID treatment? That is the black seed oils, bl black seed. So I did a video about black seed and honey, and I thought that was a great outcome. Please watch that video. It was a great outcome. And I do take Kalwanji or black seed with honey every once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin says, Dr. Bean, can you dress up as Ivermectin Man and do a special show with Dr. Corey? Yes, we can do that. <laughs> that would be a cool thing to do. So Fruendis says, says, congrats, is it possible to have long haul with mild symptoms. Yes. Uh, I responded to that before as well. Fruendis says, it is possible. Yes. Sometimes even asymptomatic can convert to long haul because it is the cells that just become dysregulated or immune system that stops becoming reset. <laughs> so there is some Susan Pick is talking about cracker sounded good. Can't have the brownies, coca is no, no for me. Send those things over to me, which are no, no for you. <laughs> so, um, Saibi Carolina, what do you know about Sinovac? The Chinese vaccine is safe and effective. So. I have done a talk about this. Yesterday, we talked about it as well. I think you're talking about, and I may be correct, I'm not very well versed with the Chinese vaccines. You may be talking about Coronavac, which is by Sinovac. I think that is what it is. Uh, their efficacy, we looked at it about 50 something, but 100% efficacy against uh, hospitalization and death. That means even if it means one can still get the infection and cold-like symptoms, but prevents death from COVID, then that is, in my opinion, that is fine. In case you don't have any other option or you're traveling, it is still better than not a vaccine. <laughs> Eric, dog. Eric, how are you doing? Cops bashing people here for non-mask. Nipa, hello. How are you doing? Christine says the threat of vaccine passport is not good. It's never mentioned a person can still travel if they have a negative test or have proof they've had COVID. And Christine, if you think about it, I've been talking about this for a long time now. There should be a way for people to prove that they had infection and they have recovered. And that should be taken equally good as the um, proof of vaccination. <laughs> Sky frog is so I wear masks because I have cool looking masks. Actually, uh, we have a cool bean. Um, what is her name? Tina. So she sent me this mask recently and she had me. So let me stop sharing for a second. This is my hundredth chit chat, so I can do this. So this one has cats on it. You see, okay. So she she did it for because I have cats. So thank you very much. <laughs> Nick Gibson says, "I want to share your videos with my mom, who's very into wild vaccine conspiracies, population control, etc." But the video yesterday with Laurie really changed my mind because 
how much you left. Uh, so is there a continuation? So uh, Dr. Laurie's video this morning was actually quite strong to say vaccines are bad. It is not necessary that I believe in them. Neither have my previous videos in that line. <laughs> Zen Solo said, did he answer my question about Luffy? Yes, so Luffy was here, and he has uh, scratched me and run away. Neele Das is here. New study showed vaccine efficacy reduced by 50 to 70% versus Epsilon variant. Can you please review? OK, I'll have to check it up, Neele. Thank you. There is Luffy. Colin says, this is the best learning experience out there now. Thank you, Colin. Um, Falcon says, please don't order a vermectin from India. It's available on agricultural farm and see legit stores. OK, so <laughs> I have nothing to do with this. OK. Nipa Gandhi says, it's another fashion accessory, correct? I like it. Uh, when I'm wearing a mask, as much as I'm comfortable that all right, I might not get any new variant. I am also comfortable that I'm not making somebody else uncomfortable who might want me to wear a mask and who might believe in the mask. I'm sure that I'm making somebody who does not like masks uncomfortable as well. Uh, so that's a continuous issue. Cool Bean says, thank you. You're very welcome. So D. Colin says, I'm 49 years old, female, and ready to get my second shot of Pfizer. What do I have to expect as far as the side effects? Do everyone get side effects? If so, what are the me medication you can take? So I can't directly speak about you. I had uh, Moderna. The second dose side effects are supposed to be a tiny bit more intense, although I did not see them to be much more. It is not necessary that everyone will get them. Usually, if you didn't get much side effects from the first one, you might not get much from the second either. My first one was very similar to the second, where actually, after the first dose, I remember I had intense inflammation here in the jaw area for two, three weeks. And I could not speak correctly. I could not eat correctly. It was just horrible. And I didn't have that after the second dose. Some folks say that they get more after the second dose. Now, what are the kind of side effects? Every vaccine has a different set of side effects that they have more common after the second shot versus the first shot. I do not remember off the top of my head that what are the Pfizer's most common. I suspect that these would be, if at all, these would be fatigue, tiredness, headache, um, myalgias, joint pains at most. Of course, there are others who get more severe as well. OK, so <clears throat> old as dirt says, Dr. Bean, if, I, if a person has not had the vaccine allergic, what will it do to the non-vaccinated person if given a blood transfusion from someone that has had the vaccine? So somebody who has had the vaccine would possibly have antibodies. It's not necessary that they have antibodies all the time. So it would depend when did they get the vaccine? Do they have antibodies? Do they have any memory cells running around? Do they have any T cells running around? And those cells can then, and the antibodies can then be shifted into this new person. Cells will be just like blood when given does not stay in that person forever. It's a short term solution. So the cells will be a short term solution. The uh, antibodies usually survive three to four weeks or so. If it is antibody generated by a vaccine, then that might stay longer. So again, let's say if I was vaccinated, I have antibodies for two months. 
and my antibody is present for one month and then I try give the blood, donate the blood, that blood may have antibodies that would survive for another month. Now, during that time, if those antibodies are present, that might cross react if there is any um, antigen present or the SARS-CoV-2. Otherwise, they'll just disappear like many other antibodies that are part of the plasma. Sherry says, I think Tess Laurie had a good point regarding more careful look into these vaccines. I agree with that. Sheila Hendricks, peace and blessing to my brother. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for these colorful hearts. I see your comments all the time on YouTube as well. Thank you. <laughs> Dr. Z says this is a cute, cute mask. Yes. And thank you very much for the super chat as well. Ray has a very good question, and I do not know if I have a good answer. Are there labs that are actively working to ensure quality assurance for ivermectin from different sources, especially veterinary? No idea. No idea. Although I have seen questions, and this is not to say that veterinary uh, ivermectin is correct for humans. I do not know because they're not tested on human. But some folks say that, hey, some animals, for example, horses, are very, very expensive. So their drugs are very polished as well. I feel bad that we are in this kind of a state um, that we have to look for veterinary medicines. Uh, Doug says, thank you for getting the Tesla video and shoot. I missed it. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Being curious says, I think I think that some of the Luffy's popularity is the name Luffy. Yes. Yeah, Luffy is a good name. KC says, hello, Dr. Bean. Will monocytes with trapped S1 bits in them die and spill out those S1 spike proteins? So ideally, they should be removed by other monocytes and the S1 proteins digested and destroyed. These S1 proteins can be further removed by complexing with other antibodies. And so there are many mechanisms for us to clear the debris. The question that is in my head, and I do not have an answer, is very similar to your question. And that is, is it that all monocyte in this person cannot digest that S1? And now when one monocyte is dead and the other one eats it up and eats that S1, now that S1 is going to live in them. Having said that, with the long haulers, what I've seen is, that when you reset the immune system, when you calm it down, so let's say if we go here for a second, and here is what is the pathology that we are seeing so far. This is a monocyte. A monocyte, let's say, usually will die within two to three days. That is the life of it. It can get into a tissue and live there as a macrophage, and that can be for years. However, it looks like when this monocyte has gotten something stuck in it, which it is not able to digest, then it gets stuck in M2 state and just continues to live. Why does it continue to live? I do not know. What are the cytokines that make a monocyte to continue to live longer? I do not know. A monocyte can become a macrophage and live longer. That is known. But a monocyte sitting in monocyte state and still living longer is at least to me it is not known now the solution is to calm down the immune system reduce the cytokine production to allow this monocyte to calm down enough to to be cleared out to be dead now your question is still outstanding that when this monocyte dies this s1 if it is eaten up by the other macrophages which is a normal behavior of cells Immune cells, when they clear other cells, they eat them up. If it is eaten up by a macrophage, then it is possible that the macrophage can digest this and clear out this whole thing, and we are done. We are clear. Good. Or if 
we calm down the immune system, for example, with steroids, and that allows this monocyte to die within a couple of days by doing apoptosis and spill the guts. And then those things are eaten up by the macrophages that might clear the S1s as well. So exactly what is the mechanism is not known, but this is the possible immune mechanism. It is not going to be outside of these two possibilities because there is no other way to clear these monocytes. Ambassador says 60% BS, but whatever. So I do not know what is this side discussion. Eric, the dog says, can a vaccinated person prove vaccination? Do they brand them or what? I can say I've been vaxxed according to situation. So <laughs> branding them. So the, the cards for vaccine. <laughs> Rima says, Dr. Bean replied before saying he's not used it. It's part of Dr. Bryce Patterson's protocol for long haulers. Are you talking about Miravirok? Yes, I have not used Miravirok. Uh, Kimberly says, would the transfusion contain spike proteins in regards? So that's a very good question. <laughs> the answer depends upon what do you believe. And the problem is even when it is science, there are so many folks who are providing science. Uh, if I go here for a second, there are, so let's say this is one folk who is providing science. So this is, let's say, Mubin. This is Dr. Marek. So Dr. Marek is this cute guy. This is Mubin. Then let's say there is this geared person as well. Then there is Ten Penny or someone. And then there is someone else and someone else. And they are all providing science. At least to, to a lay person, they are providing science. So this is all science now. Now in this science, <laughs> half of them are saying, hey, there is... Spike protein is, let's say, not running around the way we think it is. And then lots of the folks are saying, well, the spike protein is everywhere in the blood. And it is in the ovaries. And it is in the liver. And it is in the other tissues and so on. So the question is, who do you believe? If this is possible, that when the deltoid muscle had the spikes and then there are some cells that broke down. There is inflammation that happened. Some blood vessels opened up. Some spikes went into this into the blood. The question is, how many of those spikes? What is this quantity, if at all? Were there a billion spike here and one million came here? Is that even uh, something to consider that it is harmful or not? I do not know. So. If there are spikes, so let's assume for a second, if there are spikes and that blood transfusion would contain spikes. If there are no spikes and the transfusion will not contain spikes. Now I'll give you one more uh, thing to think about. If this person who has spikes is doing okay, is healthy, then those spikes are really not doing anything. And so if you got them as well, you'll probably also just do whatever. In the case of virus, it is not the spike which is just causing the damage. It is the quantity of the virus continuously increasing, producing cellular damage and causing massive destruction and the cell damage patterns to occur and the immune system becoming mad. That is not something that can be matched by a tiny amount of spike protein. But again, as I said, it really depends who is... <laughs> your science provider. So Michelle says, what did you do to make your side effects go away? So I kept taking anti-allergies. I kept taking anti, um, anti-inflammatories. I like brufin-like things more. Uh, my son is allergic to brufin, so he's taking Tylenol with anti-allergic plus hydrochivermectins.
says. <laughs> she blinded me with science. Heart patron says she blinded me with science. Yes. <laughs> Too much science. So let's answer a couple of more questions. So William Goff says, have you changed any of your protocols since having Dr. Chetty on what who has somewhat different protocol and relies more heavily on promethazine and H2 blockers on day eight? No. So I respect what he said, and I respect that he is using that with success. So far, my protocol has been working very good. And so I did not need to go make a change. MSNBC says, if no vaccine and not yet taking ivermectin, if a person wears a paper mask with a cotton mask with a HIPAA filter inside, enough to keep safe from Delta, I hope so. <laughs> I would like to have a picture of this setup. <laughs> then I can tell, but uh, hope so, yes. Uh, <clears throat> Ray says, is there a good diagnostic test series to determine BBB damage? Blood-brain barrier damage is usually very evident. The person is going to end up in a hospital. They would have lots of neurological issues because a brain tissue does not like blood components to touch it. And so blood-brain barrier compromise would cause a lot of issues. Still, there can be... Uh, fluorescence that can be added to various proteins and then we see the proteins entered the brain or not. But these are not run-of-the-mill standard tests. They can be CSF testing as well but not very accurate. So Kevin says, Dr. Bean, from a cellular evolution perspective, do you imagine COVID eventually becoming less? Yeah, so I imagine COVID becoming a humanized coronavirus soon. And so Many of us right now might have COVID-like things sitting in there, just like other human viruses. Maybe COVID would just sit with us that way too. It would have to. So Genesis Light says, does T detect test correlate to some level of immunity? It means, yes. So T detect is looking at your memory B, B and T cells, T cells. And that means there is immunity. That means that when the antigen is going to come up, these cells are going to wake up and start functioning. So how about this for a hundredth? So thank you very much. There's another question. Let's look at this one. Eric Cook says, first Pfizer today, should I take ivermectin daily for first week or it once a week? So I took ivermectin almost daily for a few days. So thank you for to everyone for the super chats. Thank you. Uh, Rima says, where does one get T detect? So there is, I think uh, it is approved by FDA. There is a link there on the FDA site as well. And you can just simply Google it too to know how to get it. I can find it and share the links with you, Rima. So <clears throat> thank you very much for staying out with me for 15 months or more and stay safe happy and healthy i would see you tomorrow uh, please like subscribe and share at least this one this is hundreds so at least like this one and then if you would like to support this work there are three links in the description you can buy me a coffee or you can use paypal to support it or you can be a patron thank you very much and i'll see you tomorrow